2022 was this enormous year for releases of foundations and I bought 21 of them. So I'm going to get into doing a countdown or a ranking of those. We're gonna get into that video right now. Now, please keep in mind that these were just released in 2022. I'm not talking about my all-time favorite foundations. I'm only talking about the ones that I tried in 2022 and the ones that I tested and found out whether or not they were good for my skin. So the a Holy Grail is a whole different video. This one is what I've tried in 2022 and feel like are really good or really bad. Before we do, I'm gonna put a timestamp right here where you can skip ahead to just the reviews of the foundations because I do go through other things in this intro and it takes a couple minutes. So if you're only interested in the reviews, no big deal, just skip ahead. First thing we do is I always talk about what I have on today. This sweater is so comfortable. It's a soft sweater. It's kind of in a muted um, periwinkle blue. It's a beautiful color. It's ribbed and it does have the detailing of the buttons down in the V-neck. Just really fun, very stretchy. I did size up on this to an extra large. I feel like it was a very fitted sweater and it's kind of hard for me with my menopausal tummy to find sweaters that don't make that look more accentuated. So I do love this one very much. Also, the chunky necklace I have on today has two different textures on it. Now this necklace in particular is stainless steel, which I think is great because it won't tarnish. Very inexpensive jewelry when you do it this way, but I love that chunky chunky chain look right now it's so cute and then also the earrings match it really well too these are a hammered kind of that chain look to them and then they have the little disc on the top right there and i'm in love with both of these and they went so well together didn't plan on that but they went really well together when they came and as always i will have all of my jewelry my makeup and everything listed and linked below in the description box if you just go and you look for where it says more click on that once and then go and look for more again and click on it again and the whole description box will open up that's right underneath the title i do have a numbering system i'll put a three up here on the screen when i get to the product that i'm talking about that's number three i will be holding that up if you don't catch the name or the color or anything don't worry about it just remember that you wanted to look into number three Again, go down into the description box, open that up. Next to the number three, one through however many we get through today, but next to the number three will be that product that I just talked about. It's link, color, anything like that that you need to know about it. And that will be a really easy way for you to shop if you would like to do it that way. All right, that is our introduction. Now let's get into ranking from the worst to the best of these foundations that I found in 2021. Let me tell you what my criteria is for a foundation. I have to have a foundation that does not accentuate my pores and the texture that I have on my face. As I get older, I'm really noticing the sagging in my jowls and it's really starting to happen right through here. I also have a lot of scarring that I like to cover up and I like my foundation to make my skin look like skin, not like makeup. And I also, in the winter time, which we're coming into, with the dry heat that gets turned on inside, I have very, very dry skin. In the summertime, I can get away with like normal to dry, but in the winter, oh boy, it just gets dry, dry, dry. So most of the time I like a natural foundation that has good coverage, but it also doesn't look like makeup. I'm not asking for a lot. Doesn't look like makeup, doesn't dry me out, and has kind of a semi-dewy finish to it. So that being said, we're gonna start with the foundations that were really, really bad, and I'm not gonna take any time on them. I'm just gonna tell you one or two reasons why they were really bad. In at number 21 is the Maybelline Green Edition Foundation. First of all, this delivery system is a mess. I don't like it one bit. The, it clogged up on the little dropper there, but this felt greasy and it got patchy immediately. This is not a foundation that was any good for my mature skin. And at number 20 is the Say Slip Tint. This also was very greasy on my skin. I mean, this was so greasy that I actually felt like I had oil on my skin. This is not a good foundation for anybody that really doesn't want their texture to show up. 
I actually don't know who this would be a good foundation for. I know that it's just supposed to be a tint, but even underneath foundation, I found that it made my other foundation break apart. It was not a good foundation at all. And at number 19 is the number seven Restore and Renew Multi Action Serum Foundation. This does have an SPF. When I saw this come out, I was so excited because you know that my number one drugstore foundation of all time is the number seven Lift and Luminate. However, this was so patchy, so mottled. I could not, it didn't matter how I tried to put this on, fingers, sponge, brush, it didn't matter. It was just no coverage. It felt heavy. This was not good on my skin. Broke apart very rapidly. This was not a good foundation. I actually uh, took this one off like a couple hours after I had it on. In at number 18 is a foundation that I have already decluttered. It is the e.l.f. Camel Powder Foundation. I know that so many people love this. However, I could not get past how dry this made my face look and the color selection was so poor that I being very cool toned This just made me look beyond orange and it made me look beyond dry So it did not work for my dry mature skin and at number 17 is also one that I have decluttered But I did try that's the L'Oreal Balm foundation This foundation again is very poor on its color choices and I just looked like a pumpkin when I put it on I have heard so many people absolutely Absolutely love this, but I could not make it work specifically because of the color. I think if there had been other colors, and I tried three, if there had been a color that I could have found that worked with my skin tone, I think I might have been able to make this one work, but because it oxidized so quickly, even after I put it on, I looked even more orange. I had to declutter it right away, and yeah, I hope they come out with other colors so I can actually try this and see if it would be a decent foundation, but if you're warm if you're neutral you might be able to wear this one in at number 16 is the joa crystal glow prime dation all-in-one foundation this one felt very heavy on my skin and while it did cover and it did last on my skin just fine it just felt so heavy and i felt like i looked like i had makeup on and i felt like it was too cakey for my dry skin and my mature skin i know that a lot of people love this and this has been a wonderful foundation for others, but because it was so heavy, it didn't work for me. By the way, during all of this, if I say your favorite foundation and I say that I didn't like it, please disregard what I'm saying because you have your skin and the way that your skin works and it's so different. This, these are just my recommendations and what I've found throughout the year as these have been released. Okay, so that was kind of a roundup of what I really didn't like. Those were the ones that I really didn't like. Now we're getting into the medium category, the, the category where I was average. It was not good, it was not bad. There were pros to it, but there were cons to it. And the first one is the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer, Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. Now, I actually did like the way that this covered. I did like the way that it acted as far as keeping me hydrated and the coverage and how light it felt and I really did like it. The color was really off on this and the coverage was not as much as I would have liked to have been. I think if I could have gotten this in a darker color, this one was sent to me, so they sent me a very, very light one, but I think if I could have gotten this uh, in a darker color, a color that matched me better, that I would have ranked it a little bit higher. But because I didn't have it, and it was just one that really gave me very, very light coverage and didn't cover up these spots that I have around my jawline, it ranked a little bit lower. Number 14 was a foundation that I was so excited to get and try because if any of you watched my channel for any length of time, you know that the Kosas Concealer, Revealer Concealer, is one of my all-time favorite concealers. I fell in love with it. It's actually what made me go back to using concealer after years of not using concealer. The So the highly anticipated Kosas Revealer Foundation, I was so excited about. But as I used this, I did find that it felt very heavy on my skin. It had wonderful coverage and the color was good on it, but it felt heavy and it did break apart after a few hours. So even though I, it's a good foundation, it doesn't check all the boxes for me. So I had to put it lower on the list because it doesn't have that longevity that I really wanted. In at number 13 is the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter. 
this is in real life filter foundation now what i have to say about this foundation is it is a little bit heavier than most of the foundations that are coming out however the coverage is phenomenal on it in one coat you can get your coverage and it look really really good it does look very skin like as well and it lays across my texture on my skin very well too my only thing about this is throughout the day i did feel like i had makeup on so i did feel like there was a little bit of break apart just a, a tiny bit so it couldn't be high up there on the list but as far as drugstore this is probably my highest ranked drugstore foundation for the year this one was really good and i do feel like if you have normal skin you're gonna like this one it's gonna be good for you in at number 12 is one that my daughter fell in love with and so i sent it home with her and i don't have it but i did a whole entire video on the charlotte tilbury beautiful skin foundation this is an extremely dewy foundation so if you have combo to oily skin don't even try this one i have very dry skin like i told you and this barely worked for me as far as how dewy it was it looks pretty on your skin but i found that you do have to powder it down or use some sort of setting spray to make that shine go down because it does have a bit of too much shine for me it had really good coverage it reminded me very much of the estee lauder futurist but I do feel like it wasn't as good as that one. That one is like the holy grail for me as far as those dewy uh, SPF kind of CC creams. And I did feel like I had to use a bit more powder than I like using on my mature skin in order to get it set down. But like I said, my daughter absolutely loved it and she stole it. So if you have skin that is normal, you might absolutely love this. In at number 11 is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. I do have the matte one coming up next. Next, and I'll tell you why I ranked this lower than the matte one. Even though I do like a good glow on a foundation, I felt like the coverage on this one wasn't as good as the matte. And that stands to reason a glowy foundation doesn't cover as well. But I also felt like this one just was a little bit heavier than the matte, which doesn't make sense to me either. But I really do enjoy this one. It is a very close runner up to the matte version, which I'm gonna show you right now in at number 10. The matte version just seemed to have a little bit more longevity. Even though I have very dry skin, it did not dry me out. It covered everything beautifully in one coat, which I thought was great. So this is a medium coverage foundation, very buildable. Beautiful foundation, and the reason that it didn't make it into my top ones was just because they have a little bit extra something that I felt like was missing in this one. I can't really put, even put my finger on it, but they both are really beautiful foundations. And either way that you decide to go, I think that you'll be happy with them, but the matte would be my choice for a better one than the glow one. In it, number nine was one that I had a really hard time ranking at number nine because these are now become, becoming my top favorite ones of the year and i'll tell you that the only reason this ranked at number nine was because of availability this is the wayne goss luxury cream foundation this foundation is phenomenal one other reason whoops hello one other reason that i one other reason that I ranked this a little bit lower, besides the fact that it has been out of stock ever since it very first released, is the fact that when I do wear this, if I get a little bit too carried away, which it's easy to because you need so very little to cover your skin. If I do get a little bit too carried away, it, I will find it settling just a little bit, but that's user error. That's not the foundation itself. This covers so light and so beautifully i just take a dampened beauty sponge and i will dab it right in there and then i will just pat it across my skin and i'm telling you your skin looks airbrushed anywhere you need just a little bit co extra coverage you tap down in there and you just tap it across that area and it doesn't look like you you know got more in one place than you have in another it's gorgeous and you can see right here i've used this ever since it came out probably i want to say it came out in the spring and i have kept using it so i do have a little divot going on there but i have a ton of product in there still and this is what i reach for on my days off when i'm not testing foundations for you all this is a beautiful foundation it worked great through the summer as well and because it's cream it's going to work great on dry skin so no texture beautiful foundation. I wish I could rank it higher. Please bring it back in stock very, very soon, Wayne and Beautylish or whoever else is carrying it. Number eight 
technically this one just came out this one is from iconic london and this is the super let's see this is the super smooth smoother blurring skin tint and this is actually what i have on today and i've worn this probably five or six times since i got it i got it at the very beginning of the sephora vib sale and i haven't been able to put it down it is light on your skin it feels like skin it is just a beautiful foundation that has such good coverage for being a skin tint that i'm in shock it doesn't accentuate any texture it covers so well it doesn't settle it lasts all day this is so pretty and you pair this with their new primer that they have and it is gorgeous it's absolutely beautiful it's the combination that i have on today and i just think it gave such a beautiful glow to my skin and i cannot say anything bad about this and the reason that it's a little bit lower is because it did just come out and i haven't had a chance to test it in like hot weather or anything like that i'm only testing it in the cold and the heaters on inside so that's why it's a little bit lower but if you've been looking for an extremely light foundation this one might be just perfect for you in at number seven this is from thrive this is the buildable blur cc cream and this one was kind of reformulated not necessarily released but i wanted to put it in here because i had never gotten the other one i only tried this one when they did re-release it incredible beautiful foundation oh my goodness this is better and i like the it's cc cream but it is better than the it's cc cream and it is a definite contender for estee lauder futurist it is so pretty on mature skin covers like a dream feels quite hydrating a little bit like a medium thickness it's not really a very thin one but it doesn't feel like it, you have a lot of makeup on your skin either. It's so pretty. Doesn't show texture, doesn't settle into fine lines. I really have been enjoying this one and I'm so glad that I got it because I wish that I had tried it earlier, but if it wasn't as good as this, it wouldn't have hit the ranking as high. So this is a beautiful foundation for mature skin. And actually I feel like this would be a beautiful foundation for anyone's skin because it just has so many good benefits to it. Great ingredients and it does have the sun. Number six is the NARS light reflecting foundation i should have told you what colors all of these were however you'll be able to see that down in the description box this one is in vienna i adore nars foundations this is very light foundation as far as its texture and the way it wears but it gives you really good coverage and when it talks about it being a lighting foundation it really does give you that pretty just kind of glowy without being dewy or without being shiny at all skin this is gorgeous and i felt like i wish that i could have put the next three foundations all into one instead of having to find one that i liked a little bit less than the other one but this is a foundation that works on so many women that they absolutely love it from oily clear to the very driest and this didn't cling to any of my dry patches didn't settle didn't cause texture, wore all day long. It's just a beautiful foundation and it's been raved about over and over again for very good reason. In at number five is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Undetectable Stay True Foundation. Now, the reason that this ranked higher than the NARS one is because I do feel like this is a little bit lighter and when it says undetectable, I felt like it wore just a little bit more like skin with really good coverage this is a little bit more dewy than the other one the nars one i felt like for my dry skin this fit the bill just a little bit better it is one that i could get such good coverage out of by putting you know just by putting a little bit extra on places that i needed it and yet i could really thin it out and it didn't look like it was heavy on the texture or the pores that i had this is such a pretty foundation and all through the summer i wore this so i know that it holds up during the heat and now i get to test it in the drier parts of the year but i have tested it this week and it worked out really well so love this foundation especially for its longevity and it does give you a very airbrushed look to your skin in at number four is the patrick ta cream and powder foundation you get your cream in here and it has a protective cover that goes over top of it so the cream is there and then the powder is right here so you can use the powder has a pretty good coverage in it as well you can use it as a setting powder or you can use it you know just as a little bit of extra coverage if you want to 
but the cream in here is so good and it covers this is a really good second runner up to the wayne goss as far as the way that it covers but the way that this lays across my skin is a little bit better than the Wayne Goss one because no matter what, it doesn't settle into any, you know, lines or anything. Even in the summer months when it was, I was a little bit more sweaty and, you know, I was out in the sun and whatnot. So this one for me, I like it because you get the powder. I also like it because of its longevity and the fact that it just doesn't accentuate anything at all. I have that texture that I was talking about and it covers so well. And if I want to use this as my concealer, I can use this as my concealer too and get really good coverage on this one. This is just a very beautiful skin-like foundation that you can sheer out a ton and make it just look like a tint or you can build it up and it can really look beautiful so it is a cream you know that it's going to be a little bit heavier than any sort of a tint or anything but for me these creams with my very dry skin they work so well and this one i think is a phenomenal foundation now you're going to think it's very strange that i was talking about some foundations being too dewy. This is the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. This one, if you are combination to oily, please don't pick this up because you're going to hate it. <laughs> this is the most serum-like foundation that is in this roundup. And when I say that, it when it goes on your skin, it just feels like skincare. It feels like you're being very, very hydrated and the, the dewiness to it lasts practically all day unless you touch it up with powder or a setting spray. I love it though because it the very thinnest of layers it covered so very well and because I do have dry skin it just made my skin glow. I did have to you know kind of pat it down a little bit with a little bit of powder but I didn't have to get crazy to where it looked very cakey. For me this was one of the standouts of the year as it came out. It is so beautiful and it really did check off all the boxes for needing coverage and yet being light, no texture, no break apart, longevity. It was just really beautiful for me. A lot of people, I know that they did not like this one, but I fell in love with it immediately. The very first time I put it on, I'm like, this is a fabulous foundation and I haven't changed my mind at all. Number two and number one, this was so hard because I love both of these and I love them equally and I've been reaching for them equally. But let's just go with number two being Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This is almost perfection. Actually, both of these in the top two are almost perfection. This makes my skin look flawless. I feel so good when I wear this. It gives that really radiant glow without looking like you're greasy or without breaking apart through the day. It's a very soft, I would say satin finish to it. It's just a beautiful coverage beautiful finish, absolutely no break apart, no settling into my pores or my texture. The coverage was phenomenal on it and I really loved the longevity on it as well. Hourglass does their foundations very well anyway and I love their concealer but this one they really did an extra good job on. It doesn't matter whether you're 20 years old or whether you're 80 plus years old. You could wear this. It is a beautiful foundation and I feel very confident in it being in the top two because if anybody picks this up they're gonna love it. And again the very first time I wore this I felt like this this is very special and I have not changed my mind. This is a great foundation for anyone that is anywhere from very oily to very dry. I feel like it's a very adaptable foundation that way. So beautiful, beautiful foundation, Hourglass. And the number one spot, and I did not think I was going to like this as much as I do, and I just think it's fantastic, is the House Labs Triclone Skin Foundation. This has like a ton of different silicones in it or dimethicones in it. And I think that's why it looks so beautiful on mature skin because it is the most smoothing foundation that I have ever seen. And such a little bit goes a long way. So it is a medium coverage with a very buildable feel to it. It is so smoothing and so blurring on your skin that if you are somebody that has that problem, you really might wanna look at this. 
I feel like they did a fantastic job on it. It does not break apart. The longevity on this was phenomenal. I slept in this one day, not overnight, but I took a nap in it. And when I woke up, I'm looking at my skin thinking, this, it, it did pretty darn good. I mean, you know, you get a little bit of wear no matter what you're going to do if you're going to nap in your foundation, but it really was beautiful all day. And I have worn this consistently. I reached for this one, Patrick Ta, Wayne Goss, those are my three that I actually just grab for all the time when I'm wanting something where I don't have to fuss with it very much. It's just very easy and it's very beautiful. Extremely buildable if you're somebody that loves full coverage, but I think that you can get away with one coat if you can't in any other foundation because this just perfects your face and it makes you look so flawless. This is one of those that I was just so impressed by from the very first get-go and again have never changed my mind about. So that is 21 foundations and I know there were a few others. There were some others that I was thinking, did I try that foundation? And I think I have. I think I have tried Ilya's and I also think there was another one that I had tried, but I, oh, Calaray. Ilya and Calaray, they were extremely greasy on my skin. So that makes 23, but I'll just throw those two in as a bonus and we'll call it good. I don't know if there were any others out there that any of you tried, but if there's any that you did try that I didn't talk about, let us all know down in the comment section what you tried and if you liked it or not and how it went for you. I would love to know that. And again, these are just the ones that were released in 2022. Can you believe that this many foundations were released? It is so hard to keep up on, but I'm happy to say that I was able to for you and I hope that you did enjoy this video. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing. I'd love to have you here as a part of the family. Let's all go out of here and we'll watch one more foundation video. And this will be a recommendations video on foundations for you so that you can take a peek at that as well. Take care of yourselves. Love you very much. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Goodbye, my friends.